All righty. Well, it's 3.30, so I'll go ahead and uh, get the uh, get us kicked off here. So welcome, everybody. My name is Paul Hieronymus. I am the uh, Director of Technology for the North Ridgeville City Schools, and I'm also the Vice Chair of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. I really appreciate that we have so many people joining us today to see, well, I think is some of the best content providers in the country. And you'll, you can really notice that when you look at other states at their DL pages, and you'll see that many of our content providers are focused or our features on their pages. So it, we're just a really fortunate to have some of these great presenters here with us today, as well as being right in our backyard. Uh, today is going to be focusing on uh, career programming for our middle school group, middle school age students, although they do have other age groups that they also follow as well. So if you're getting more information, you could be able to do that as well. So with that, I wanna thank everybody again for being part of our program. And I'm gonna turn it over to our first presenter, which is Mary Rowland. She is from Info Ohio. And almost forgot one last thing I need to make sure I mentioned, we'd love for you to be a member of our associate level, which can be for free. Uh, so if we, you'll be receiving some information on that from Tom after the program is over. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mary and thank you very much for leading us off with our presentations. Okay, great. Thank you, Paul. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. You should see my PowerPoint up there. Thumbs up if we can see the PowerPoint. All right, good. Great. Thank you. Okay, so welcome. Uh, thank you. My name is Mary Rowland, and I am a professional instructional specialist with Info Ohio. And today we'll take a look at resources provided by Info Ohio to help middle school students explore and learn more about careers. So if you're not familiar with Info Ohio, we are Ohio's, just uh, make some adjustments here to my screen really quick. So if you're not familiar with Info Ohio, we are Ohio's pre-K-12 digital library, and we provide quality premium content and web tools at no cost to Ohio's um, schools, teachers, students, and families. And equity is really at the heart of our mission, ensuring that each Ohio pre-K-12 student has equal access to high quality digital resources for successful education and a successful future. So if you are new to Info Ohio, here are some key steps for getting started. First, you'll wanna to go to www.infohio.org and you can uh, see the web address there on the screen. You wanna make sure that you're logged in. So if you look at the top left corner on the screen here in front of you, um, you'll probably see either your school district name or Info Ohio statewide user up at the top left corner. If you are not logged in, the button will be red. So you can click it and do a search for your school or your district name, and then you can find your password and log in. So let's take a look at resources for grades six through eight, and we're gonna start on the homepage, and we're gonna click on the grades six through eight button here on our homepage. So here you'll find selected resources for middle school students. We'll take a look at Info Ohio's I Wonder, digital video collection and world book student. To access information about any Info Ohio resource, you'll just click the little gray I button in the right hand corner, just like I have um, shown here on my screen. And we're gonna start with I wonder. So after clicking on the I button, you'll find a page that looks like this. And here you'll find URLs to use for easy access to quickly provide links to this resource in your Google Classroom, or if you have another learning management system, as well as um, providing a link to this resource on your website, or even like a class newsletter. You'll also find some additional training and support materials. And as you prepare your teaching plans, we're going to take a quick look at the Genius Hour Teacher Guide for ideas on how to help your students get started with discovery and inquiry learning. So the Genius Hour Teacher Guide provides resources, standards, and an implementation plan. And with the Genius Hour Teacher Guide, the Student Worksheet, and I Wonder, you have everything that you need to lead your students through a career exploration mini project. 
So here we are back on the iPage for iWonder, and we're going to access this resource by clicking on the green open button. So next, let's explore inside iWonder. This tool is organized in a question format. So each question includes additional information and you can help your students match their personal interests and skill sets to different careers. So we're gonna start with the question, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And from there, students can click on a subcategory to explore a little bit more about jobs that are perfect for them. So we're gonna click on the subcategory, do you want to know what jobs are right for you? And here you'll find some different um, career exploration assessment tools, including one from Ohio Means Jobs called the Career Inventory. So here students can take an interest survey that will um, offer different careers and career fields based on their survey results. So it matched their interests to different careers and career fields. Students can create an account where they can save their results they can complete different activities and they can complete different or they can complete different activities and save those activities um, to, their to their backpack. So this way, year after year, students can return to this account, review their results, maybe take that inventory a second time um, and learn more about themselves and about the different careers available to them. Ohio Means Jobs also added a budget calculator and a lifestyle calculator. And this can help students explore how much they'll need in order to cover future expenses based on the lifestyle they want to live. So this can be really valuable information as they explore more career options um, that will satisfy their, their financial and future needs. So these are two new tools that um, Ohio Means Jobs added that are really helpful for any kind of career exploration learning with your students. Okay. And let's see, I saw there was a question here in the chat, so I will um, address that in the chat here in just a moment. And then our next resource is Info Ohio's Digital Video Collection. So the Info Ohio's Digital Video Collection includes streaming educational videos supporting all curriculum areas and Ohio's learning standards. These videos are segmentable and dot downloadable, and most videos include teacher guides. So these videos can be shown in your classroom or students can also view them at home. And you have a couple different ways of looking for videos and browsing for videos. First, you can browse for videos by subject or by series. And you can see that right up here at the top of the screen. Or you can start by checking out our popular playlist. So to locate videos that will help students explore and plan for future careers, simply click on the red more playlist button and then select careers. So in partnership with Broadcast Educational Media Commission, Info Ohio's digital video collection provides a growing list of videos featuring in-demand careers. Many of these videos were developed with support from the Ohio Department of Education's Career Connections and feature Ohio professionals sharing the highlights of their profession. And I think this is a great way to help students explore careers located right here in Ohio, learn from Ohioans who have really successful careers um, that they love at Ohio-based companies and organizations. So from accountant to marketing specialist to youth director, students will get a sneak peek into careers that align with their interests, their likes, and their strengths. And our last tool today is World Book Student. So if you remember those old World Book encyclopedias that used to be lined up nice and neat on library shelves, well, the World Book encyclopedias have a brand new look for the 21st century. This resource is suitable for students in grades five through 10, and it includes eBooks, videos, activities, primary sources, read alouds, and translation features. Um, you can also access, access Lexile levels for the articles within World Book Student. And students often find inspiration in the stories of those who have overcome adversity to find success in rewarding careers. 
So consider using World Book Student and the Biography Center within World Book Student to integrate career exploration into your content area curriculum. And you can do this by accessing that Biography Center, and then you can search for biographies in the area, um, or you can search biographies by area of work or interest, just like I have shown here on the screen. So if you would like to learn more today about any of these featured resources and how you can use them to build really engaging career exploration activities in your classroom or in your home, you can check out the blog post, Create Opportunities for Career Exploration in Grades 6 through 8 with InfoHio, and I will drop a link to that blog post in the chat. And you can also find links to Ohio Means Jobs um, Career Connections and, Ohio, I'm sorry, the Department of, uh, Department of Education Career Connections and Ohio Means Jobs, along with Info Ohio resources to support um, career exploration. And please stay connected with us. I'll drop a link in the chat. You can sign up for our listserv or um, join our newsletter email list. And if you're on social media, please uh, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as always, if you um, need any help using our resources, please reach out to us at support.infohio.org. Um, and thank you for your time. And now I'm going to pass it off to Nathan Martin at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Nathan? Thank you, Mary, for uh, sending it our way. and. Uh... Uh, that was a lot of great information and I will do my best to uh, top that or at least reach your level. Um, but yeah, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, uh, we're excited to be a part of this uh, presentation with you guys with uh, the Ohio DLA, um, just to kind of overview some of the programming that we have. But I don't want to forget before I get too far into this, um, probably over 90, 95% of the programming that we do offer here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, is free. It's free of charge. Um, it's part of what we do with our mission here at the Hall of Fame, which is to honor the heroes of the game, to preserve its history because we are a museum. Um, but where our department gets really excited is promoting the values and celebrating excellence everywhere. And that can be in your classrooms uh, as well. So, you know, 90, 95 percent of what we offer is free. And, and we kind of have, I guess I would say, two big pillars um, as far as the programming that we do offer. The first and I won't spend as much time on it uh, this, this afternoon, is the stuff that we do in-house or in-person. Um, we, we offer a field trip program in all Ohio schools, uh, grades K to eight can come to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. They can get an educational presentation uh, that lasts about 30 minutes to 60 minutes, depending on the preference of the, the teacher, the educator, and then they get time to tour the, our facility, tour our museum. Um, couple of other in-house programmings that we have, in-person programs that we have is a Get Fit training camp where we focus on um, just a healthy lifestyle in addition to the values that we have here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And during that, the students are out on the field at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium getting to go through uh, football drills that are similar to what uh, NFL teams are using at their practices and at their training camps. Um, the last program, and we do this both in person and we do this uh, remotely as well through video conference, is our Heart of a Hall of Famer program. Uh, and, and in that program, it's a character-based education program, and it's really good uh, starting, you know, especially with that middle school age group, you know, leading up into high school students. Um, and, and we get one of our, our living Hall of Famers, our gold jackets, and, and they'll come to Canton and, and they sit down and it's a Q&A uh, discussion with a moderator and the students are driving the conversation with their questions and we're asking them, you know, what does it mean to be a good teammate? What lessons did the game of football teach you that you still uh, use today now that you don't play the game? And, and it's really neat to see uh, the students' eyes light up in those moments and during those discussions. And, and like I said, we don't just do that in person for students that can come here. We do those uh, virtually as well. And we do about uh, anywhere between 10 to 15 of those a school year. We actually did one uh, today, believe it or not, with gold jacket Mike Haynes, who played with the New England Patriots and, and the Oakland Raiders. And, and like I said, it's the same type of thing, except we're using a platform, a software like Zoom, where we'll connect with your classroom. We'll have our gold jacket, uh, our Hall of Famer that's connecting in, and the students get to drive the conversation and ask those questions 
in that character education uh, format. The other things that we do virtually uh, as well include, I guess I would call it a traditional video conferencing experience where uh, the teacher or you as the educator would arrange a time with us to connect with us through, uh, we typically use Zoom and, and be courtesy of Extreme Networks, you know, those programs uh, are free and we'll be sitting here in our studio and we can talk about a wide range of topics. You know, our most popular programs tend to be careers in the NFL, where we're outlining, uh, you know, all of the different opportunities that you can have if you're not a player, if you're not a coach, uh, but you still want to have a job or a career uh, in the NFL, in sports. Uh, some of the other popular ones uh, for the middle school age students uh, tend to be our story of pro football, where we'll use things like helmets or the tickets to uh, tell the story of the game um, through the, the lens and the eyes of museum, how the game has changed. Um, and, and with all of our programs, we, we come back to the values, the lessons that the game teaches and how, you know, the game has changed, but the life lessons that are taught uh, through the game have not changed. And really, they can apply to us even as fans or our viewers of the game of football. That's a really big part of what we believe in here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, the other element that we have, you know, uh, through video conference or through our website is our teacher activity guides. We've partnered with local teachers here uh, in the Stark County area that have helped us develop um, a very large uh, group of lesson plans uh, that cover all subject matter. Uh, and they're all, you know, state standards and, and common core. They meet all of those uh, curriculum curriculum uh, expectations that you would, you would hope. And, and it's just using football, I guess, as that hook to grab the students uh, attention and we have that available on our website and, and it's free as well and then we've taken some of the I guess more customizable lesson plans out of that and and made it with each of the 32 NFL franchises so if you are teaching you know in your classroom and you're a big Green Bay Packers fan I'm a Green Bay Packers fan you could download and use uh, the Green Bay Packers activity guide so that the lessons uh, that you're using in your classroom pertain to that the one last thing I do want to mention, you know, thinking about middle school students, and it's a new program that we've started uh, this year, and we call it Before the Snap. And uh, it, it's a career focused program where we uh, reach out to, you know, NFL franchises, we reach out to people that work in the sports industry. And every Friday at noon, uh, we go live on our Facebook page. Uh, and we really consider it a program that's good for, you know, the middle school and high school age students who are thinking about what they want to do when they when they grow up or when they have to get a career or, or pick a major in college or should they even go to college you know or do a trade school option or something like that um, but then it also benefits college students and, and young professionals in the networking sense but you know we do that every Friday and we have different careers featured throughout uh, the semester uh, during the school year and, and it's it's been a really successful program to this point um, where students are having that ability and their eyes are being open to all of the different uh, opportunities that are out there for them. So that's really what, what we have uh, here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, when we think of the virtual opportunities, if you were doing one of those video conferences, we have, I mentioned two or three, but we have about 15 different programs uh, that you could choose from, you know, and I, I went into detail about the activity guide and the lessons, but uh, we're really glad to be a part of the Ohio DLA and, and be a part of this program. And I'm going to go ahead in the chat and I'll, I'll give my information and a way to contact us or to uh, get to our website and explore uh, the many different opportunities that we have here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But uh, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to uh, Tony Lawson uh, from uh, the museum down there in Cincinnati. Thank you very much. Uh, in Cincinnati, we would then have a joke that we're talking about the NFL Hall of Fame, and then we go down to the Bengals, which is such a source of uh, joy and mostly angst over the last few decades. Um, but we can enter our joke, our football jokes there. So I'm going to work on sharing my screen here. So I'm going to click this thing here this thing up and running and then work on sharing my screen here. And I believe we want this one. 
So, all right. So we'll see what uh, pops up, move some things around. Okay. Are you seeing a thumbs up? Are you seeing a big uh, career connection showcase slide on the screen? Seeing anything on the screen there? Everybody good? All right. I saw a thumbs up. Super. Okay. So I am Tony Lawson from Cincinnati Museum Center. And I'm click on this thing here. There we go. So I am talking to you today from Cincinnati Museum Center, which is our lovely, in our lovely Union Terminal here in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, which is a train station that opened in the 1930s. And we are a, a collection of museums that, uh, other than the last museum on the list there, we opened in many different organizations throughout the, uh, or many different locations throughout the decades, but we are now one institution. So we are a history museum. We are a book. Oh, go backwards there previous we are a history museum a children's museum we're a science museum uh, we have an omnimax theater changing exhibit halls a historical society library a uh, collections and research center which you'll hear about a little bit um, we're also home to the uh, uh, nancy and david wolf holocaust and humanity center which they are their own organization but they are a tenant of the museum center so uh, a whole host of museums uh, to engage our students and guests. Um, it's very interesting as we think about museums and how we engage schools and educators and students, we know the content is very important in providing a uh, very credible and standard space education is really a part of all of our missions. But there's also the, the inspiration and how that can drive students to finding really their what their career paths might be. And I attended an Association of Children's Museums conference a few years ago, and they had a, a person on the screen, a, a scientist, and she was talking about this visit she did to a museum when she was uh, in third grade. And she said the museum was great. Uh, she remembers there was a program. She played a little bit, but then they went to this section of the museum, and it was all about space. And there was this amazing artifact that had been in space. And she was so engaged, the teachers had to pull her away from that area because she was so excited and just wanted to stay and learn more about that. Uh, she went, went to the gift shop, bought a book about space, and said that she can trace to that day and that experience that uh, what drove her to become a PhD uh, scientist looking for working for NASA and looking for life in space. Um, and to trace that to one field trip experience to a museum, and now she's uh, works for NASA, is amazing. And so we know that just visiting museums and experiencing and connecting with museums can lead to those amazing experiences. Um, so before March of this past year, we did that in many different ways. We engaged students through these field trips, similar field trips, uh, learning lab programs, which are classroom-based experiences for the students to participate. Um, through our program on wheels, which are experiences that we would take to classrooms um, that when students couldn't come to us, we would go to them uh, through our educator professional development. Um, but then March hit and of course everybody has shifted and changed so much at that point. Um, so at that time, we knew that students weren't going to be able to come on in person field trips. So we started creating virtual field trips that um, are all pre-recorded and they mimic the experience of coming to a museum and that you get these views of the gallery, videos, pre-recorded videos of our staff interacting in the galleries um, and still giving the students some agency in exploring these very engaging spaces through video and photos and text. Um, our program of wheels team still leading activities. It is often outside as so we see Miss Karen in the middle of the screen there masked up when the weather was warm outside teaching. Um, so, but also leading those virtually, um, as we see the photo on the left of Miss Val with our snake Kellogg, um, so it's covering that one, uh, an animal adaptations program. So engaging with students uh, virtually as well in a live uh, format. But the program that I think that connects most to career explorations is our conversations with an expert, which are live 30-minute-ish uh, programs. We definitely don't start the Oscar off-stage music at 30 minutes. We uh, will go longer when the conversation is really, really strong. Uh, but these are conversations with our experts and uh, curators and uh, scientists here at Museum Center. So we have, I'll talk about educators on the next slide, but we have archivists and librarians at the Historic Society Library who collect and preserve documents that are hundreds of years old. 
uh, historians who collect our region's history and share how they take care of that and why they chose that career and what the day in the life of a historian is. And then we have our, our curators. Our, we see Bob Genheimer, the uh, curator of archaeology on screen. He talks about his career as an archaeologist and the, uh, the digs that he does every year, both for the, the early years of Cincinnati's settlement, um, but also um, looking at the people who lived here long before Europeans arrived in this area. And, and then uh, in regards to the science area, we have a few other people on screen. We see Dr. Glenn Stores working uh, in our paleo lab on a, a triceratops skull. Glenn is a working paleontologist who does uh, dinosaur digs every uh, summer out west, and he talks about um, really what the life is when you go out and you, uh, you collect dinosaur fossils and how you bring them out of the ground and bring them back and how you research and how you learn from, from others in the field. And then our two other curators on the screen, we see Dr. Brenda Hunda, who is our curator of invertebrate paleontology, um, who talks about her career path and how what inspired her to become a, an invertebrate paleontologist. Um, can also talk about, uh, you want to engage students and they will all love trilobites more than anything ever, have Miss Brenda come and talk to them for 30 minutes and uh, they will all be dressing up uh, for Halloween in a trilobite costume. Uh, she is so engaging. Um, and then finally, uh, Dr. Heather Farrington on the right there. Um, Heather is our curator of zoology. And so she talks a lot about the work in our genetics lab and uh, some of the projects in which she works. Uh, the one most recent one is looking at the uh, Eastern wood rat in Adams County and how there's a very small population and then doing genetics research. Is there enough diversity in that population of Eastern wood rats uh, that that can be a viable population or is that population destined to die out because there's just not a lot of genetic diversity there? Um, and they talk about what inspired them to become paleontologists and zoologists. Um, some of them it was visiting museums. Some of them it was just being in nature as they were growing up. Some of them it was a, a, an exciting or engaging educator in high school or middle school that engaged them. So, so many different ways that engaged them to join those careers. And then I will uh, go to the, the educator portion of that, because in addition to scientists and historians, we have so many educators that are experts on our team. And so the photo we have here is one of the, the programs that uh, we've done in the past that I've always been most engaged with. And it helps students understand what it's like to be an exhibit designer or work as an educator in a museum. Um, so this is a situation where the, the educator wanted to teach about uh, sound science, the science of sound energy. And so I came on to the, uh, so went to the school and talked about that we wanted to create this exhibit or these programs to talk about sound energy, but we just, we need ideas from you students. And so the students conducted all of the sound energy research on their own and they designed prototypes about, and they worked in groups and designed prototypes and built prototypes. Some of them, as you see the, uh, the folks on screen here, they, uh, they actually built a prototype to test out. Some of them developed virtual exhibits and uh, some of them did created apps as a way to teach about sound energy. Um, but it gives a really wonderful glimpse into what the, uh, what the world is like for an exhibit designer or as a museum educator in the ways that we teach uh, the, the guests who come to our museums. And then we give them feedback and kind of guide them through the process as well. And so it's great, it uh, provides self-directed learning. Um, it really helps to show if they're, as they apply the knowledge that they're gaining in the experiences um, and then gives that really nice uh, kind of deep dive into what the, uh, those worlds are like. And I think I wrap up here with my last screen. So that is our website. And so cincymuseum.org slash virtual field trips is a link to all of our virtual based experiences. And then one can link to the other areas and other engaging parts of our website. And then my email address as well. I will, uh, as I get ready to stop sharing my screen, I will also hop on the chat in Q&A in case there are any questions uh, to answer. But appreciate everyone uh, joining me and I, get the pleasure of turning it over to Emily at the Wilds. Hi, everybody. Let's see. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to be here today. Thank you, Tony. Um, I am going to work on starting to uh, share my screen. Let's see. Manage this. Perfect. Okay. Can everybody see my PowerPoint? Excellent. Thanks for the thumbs up, Tom. All right. 
so uh, I wanted to get started today with talking about our virtual careers program for our fourth through eighth grade students. Um, so um, this is a new program for us. Um, of course, as everybody else has been talking about today, we, we all changed gears in March. Um, and so the Wilds wanted to make sure that we also followed suit and were able to impact uh, schools and students as we normally would, but just in a different way. And, all right, so our mission is always to lead and inspire by connecting people and wildlife. Um, and so we wanna build a community of conservationists. And so um, we've built two different presentations, uh, one directed towards middle school students, the other for high school students. Um, both are hour long experiences. So they're 45 minutes long um, with a 15 minute or so uh, question and answer. Um, Throughout that, um, we talk about a ton of different careers, obviously, right? And all of which are normally based out at the wilds. Um, however, um, we also dive into other careers that are related towards conservation, uh, zoology, and other science-related backgrounds. Um, so all of our presentations are $100 per class uh, or group. So whether your class is currently working remotely um, or in person, um, we have a max of stu uh, 30 students just to make sure there aren't too many screens on our Zoom call. Um, and then we have two different days available with a few different time slots. So they're offered on Wednesdays from 1 uh, to 2 and 2 to 3 and Thursdays from 9 to 10 and 10 to 11. And so again, we hoped to build this presentation um, to get kids excited and interested about the different careers that one can have in science. Um, I remember being a student in middle school and just not really knowing what I wanted to do, not knowing what the opportunities were, not knowing um, what I wanted to do after high school. Um, and so we really wanted to build this with hopes of getting, um, uh, being able to have kids explore some of these opportunities um, and again, get them excited uh, about all the different opportunities that they have. And so included in this presentation, we share a ton of behind the scenes videos, photos, um, and advice from a ton of different uh, departments as well. Uh, and then as well as some case studies, which I'm gonna show you as well too. So to talk a little bit about the wilds very, very briefly, um, a lot of individuals, a lot of uh, organizations and schools have never heard of us before. So I wanted to include some brief photos um, just to show you guys a little bit about where uh, we stand for. So to go way back, uh, about 50 years, we were originally a surface mine that was mined by AEP in search of coal. Um, and so we always tell our students um, that the wilds used to look like the barren surface of the moon. Um, but moving forward, um, we were given uh, 10,000 acres by AEP. Um, and with that, we were able to uh, create an environment, a landscape, um, that could host animals on it, um, but that was in no way, shape, or form an easy feat. Um, so it took years before we were able to have animals on property before we could create those habitats. Um, and I love this picture because it shows the big muskie in the background um, that was used during the surface mining days and some of the rhinos um, that started to call the wild home. It's got a beautiful landscape. If you've been out here, you know that it just, it's beautiful, whatever the season is. Um, with so much space, it gives us an opportunity to educate people in so many different ways, whether it's our tours, or our camps, our homeschool programs. Um, and of course, there's some extra perks with having some rhinos on property too. Um, we have a ton of different students come out normally for field trips, um, as well as overnights through schools, scout groups. Um, but of course, like I said earlier, we wanted to find a way to be able to impact others uh, and students by doing something virtually instead my favorite animal, of course, the Shishwan. Okay, so if we move into what a presentation with our virtual career program might look like, we've got a ton of different uh, departments out here that are highlighted. So the first of which being everybody's favorite, animal management. Um, and so with each of these departments that we spotlight, we talk about the responsibilities for each, a photo for each, um, and go into um, what a day-to-day -day routine might look like for them as well. Um, and so this gives the students, again, an opportunity to explore different careers that they might have heard before or heard of before, but also may not have. 
Um, so really neat experience too. So we also, like I said, include some videos. Um, now the video that I'm going to show you is again, a sneak peek of a daily routine uh, for an animal management specialist. Um, this one being Cody Seplo, um, who is the gentleman that is over by far off on the screen in the back. Um, he is moving our rhinos from their outdoor yard towards the barn. Um, so when I turn or when I start this video, there's not any audio that should play through it, but you should see exactly what sort of routine he might have every day. Okay, so there was some audio with that. Um, so videos like this, as well as other photos that we share, um, other spotlight moments that we have, we really are hoping to engage and captivate all of the students, um, especially in our middle school ages too. All right. As I mentioned before, there's also a case study that we'll bring up with each of those presentations um, with the hopes that um, it makes it a more interactive experience for all of our students. So in this particular case, we're talking about some of our red crown cranes, one of which had an injury to its wing. Um, and so we'll talk briefly about how uh, an animal management specialist or a veterinarian uh, might um, look at this crane, uh, might notice that something was wrong and then what they might move forward to do. Um, and so we've got some x-rays that we've been given by our animal health team um, that help the kids work through that journey of what that might look like. Um, and so in this case, we can see that our uh, red crown crane, his name is Bernie, uh, that he has a broken wing. So as I said, um, that was just a sneak peek of some of the things that we talk about during our virtual program. Um, but I am more than happy to answer more questions, more than happy to also um, give some uh, give some more previews or answer any questions that anybody has, and I'll definitely look um, at that Q&A chat shortly, um, just to hopefully help anybody who has uh, any sorts of uh, questions for us. Um, but with that, uh, I'm going to actually hand it over to Tom Miller um, to wrap up the rest of our day. Uh, and again, thank you all so much for uh, having me. I'm sorry to interrupt, Tom. It sounds like your microphone is not working. Can you hear me now? Wow, that's weird. No? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Thank you for jumping in. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking and nobody can hear me. Um, so again, I'm Tom Miller. I'm with the Cleveland Clinic. I um, am with the Cleveland Clinic. We are proud members of the Ohio Distance Learning Association, uh, but the Cleveland Clinic's education program, which we run from K through 12, generally from September through um, May, is on hiatus. Uh, and this was not because of COVID, some other reasons, reorganization, et cetera. We'll be back in the fall. Um, but uh, I have the pleasure of uh, providing you with some information about the Cleveland Museum of Natural History's programming. Uh, Lee Gamble, who runs the education programs at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, had some conflicts today. So I'm going to share with you a really quick video, which just highlights who they are and what they do. They're amazing. Uh, if you haven't had any chance to work with the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, Lee and herself is a, a, quite a, a presenter, educator, scientist, um, and also really funny and really great with kids. Um, so uh, you, if you get a chance to work with Lee and you'll see her in the video, uh, but they do have a, a whole slew of programs. Some are career focused, some are science focused, some are health focused, 
Uh, and uh, we'll also put information about them in the uh, chat and in a follow-up when we come back or when we share information with you at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and share a little bit about the Museum of Natural History. Are you seeking a source for spectacular science? Can't take another day without dinosaurs? Straight from our labs to your laptop, the Cleveland Museum of Natural History presents our award-winning collection of interactive video conference programs for audiences everywhere, from classrooms to living room couches. Our newly expanded offerings will get you connected live with a museum educator who will guide students through an hour-long STEM-based scientific adventure. These programs highlight museum research and collections and target Ohio's learning standards while removing concerns about audience transportation. This isn't just a watch and listen lesson. You might be challenged to scavenge your space for a specific mineral or bring your favorite object to smell and show it off to the rest of your class. Up to 30 students can join our classroom-based programs, and our online assemblies are more of a science show and tell, allowing up to 90 virtual voyagers along for the event. Every program includes a teacher's guide with student worksheets for the lesson, program objectives, connections to standards, vocabulary, and suggestions for extension activities. What technology do you need to join us? In a classroom, a device connected to the internet, webcam, speakers, and a way to project our image large enough for all the students to see us. Coming aboard from home or on the move? Make sure you've got a good connection and cell phones, iPads, or other mobile devices are welcome. If you need more motion in your virtual visit, consider a live streaming, professionally guided tour of our exhibit halls. Give our team some exercise and see exhibits closer than if you were physically here. Questions along the way? Depending on the size of your group, we can either speak via microphone or use a chat feature monitored by our educators. Our live streamed interactive programs give you exclusive access to our specimens, exhibit halls, and scientist research areas. Programs can be booked individually or paired together for a comprehensive learning experience for your students. Ready to join us? Click the links below this video or call our schedulers to come aboard. We might be physically distanced, but you can be socially connected by science. All right, so, uh, so that's a little bit about the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And uh, we'll be sending out information after the session with links and contact information of all of our presenters today. Uh, we do thank you for your time uh, and your interest in career connections and hope that you visit our Ohio Distance Learning Association website. Uh, everybody can become an associate member for free, which gets you information. And also we have a YouTube channel where almost everything that we've done uh, professional development over the last two years is archived. So if you want to find out more information uh, about any of our programming, please join or go and visit our site. Uh, website and I'll send you the link for that as well. And um, we are wrapping up for today. So I wanna thank all our presenters uh, from the Ohio Distance Learning Association. Thank you attendees for coming in. And we highly encourage you to share this information with everybody you know, uh, because we're here, we have great programming in Ohio and we're real proud of how Ohio has always been at the forefront of distance learning. Uh, we were doing Zoom and, and distance learning before the before it was cool. Uh, so we hope that you uh, recognize that, share out with us, with your other educators, and thanks for coming today. Have a great day.